Hey TV fans, Bored now back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about The Tourist, Season 2, Episode 2. There doesn't seem to be any episode titles for this season for some reason, so it's just Season 2, Episode 2. Full spoilers from the start of this review. This was a solid episode. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as the first episode, but it was pretty good fun throughout, and couple of nice reveals one of them being that Elliot's mother is a head of like another crime family and it turns out there's a bit of a turf war between the two families so that's how Elliot is involved and the reason he's been kidnapped is to kind of force the head of his family that being his mother to try and pay up on an old debt. And there's also another reveal later in, in the episode, at the end of the episode, which I'll talk about at the end because I'm not 100% sure I've quite got it, but I'm pretty sure that's where they go in with it. And it involves, like, the local cop who has this weird thing with, like, the doll in his basement and like the mannequin but I'll get to that because there is a, quite a big reveal with him at the end which I think is really nicely done so I've got to say so far this season and this episode is a good example there are some good payoff to things and as much as I think probably they're leaning more into the comedy so far in this series than in series one I do think it does have those tense moments still and I do think there are there have been a couple of good reveals already, so that's definitely in its favour. And once again, I'm enjoying a lot a lot of the antics of the characters. And in a way, I think that's that's what carries the show in many ways. Then the characters are good, and there's some fun over the top sort of antics and some intrigue in there as well. Because in the stuff in this episode and getting into like this idea of like turf war which has been reunited after all these years because of Elliot's mother like killing one of the other family and, and also because of really their actions kidnapping Elliot um, that stuff just seems very by the book and we've been here done that before one thing you could read it as is you could read it as it's maybe a comment on the Troubles in Ireland and how that's potentially been stoked up again recently because of certain politics. But I don't know if that's maybe me reaching a bit too much, but you could sort of read that as some subtext. But as I said, that stuff on its own seems a bit typical and, and not really that interesting. But it is just because of how colourful the characters are. As I said in the first review from this season, you've got really good chemistry between the two leads now. Even though they're not together in this episode really. They do talk on the phone at one point and that's a funny scene which I'll get to but... Just talking about the stuff with Elliot and he gets paired off with like the youngest one of this family and the more naive the one, the one he was pray praying on his like weakness in the previous episode and he used that partly to escape. <clears throat> so he catches up with Elliot and you get semantics between them but you also get quite a nice Karadali building between him, between them, because like he tells Elliot a little bit about why they kidnapped him, but he also has this ongoing thing where he promises, partly because he's he's got him, like, and he's injured him in the fight. He injures him, so throughout the episodes, like he's he's hobbling along. He's got like an injured leg, so you have this really funny visual of like him hobbling along and, and Elliot like helping him, which is really funny for some reason. But he promises Elliot that he will help him find a boat and, and get him off the island. 
and <clears throat> you get you get some stuff between them in the episode, and there's a lot of comedy because they're just having like random tangents and li- little side e- conversations that don't really matter because at one point Elliot's picking up on up on him on his use of grammar during like a standoff scene between the two and then there's another scene where like the guy's just talking about a rock like which he's just like focused on but there's some really fun stuff between them in the episode and I do like that there is a little bit of like a trust between them and Soli forms and it's almost like at one point Elliot could kill the guy but he decides he doesn't partly because he needs him but I think also there is a little bit of yeah this guy probably isn't a terrible guy he's like not the worst of the family so they do build a little bit of a trust and there's actually quite a nice like twist with their stuff because eventually what happens is that the sister is is off looking somewhere else on the island because they decide to split up and she's like tell like contacting the brother throughout and Elliot's trying to get a signal to try and contact Helen who he does talk to at one point previously but then this guy talks to the sister and gives her a short message saying come with the boat I've got him here and the way it's played is you think he's he's like tricking Elliot and, and setting him up for a fall but the nice reveal is that when she comes with the boat because we see Elliot do a run and it's like you contacted her did you and he's like that's that so he runs off but the twist is the when the boat gets there, Elliot's actually inside it, like like the other brother has like stowed him away. And so when the coast is clear, like he tells Elliot to get going, and Elliot asks about where like the distillery is, where they, because there's this whole thing where this family sell that make make and import their own like whiskey. So there's like a distillery and like the other guys tell Nelly, if you know what's best for you, <laughs> you won't you won't go after him. That being like the oldest brother, you, you'll just get the hell off this island and out of Dodge. But of course Nelly isn't going to do this, because partly because it's a TV show and we're only two episodes into this season. So I enjoyed a, a lot of their stuff and the way there was like a a bond that developed between them. The one time Elliot talks to Helen on the phone, which is really funny, is the, the, they briefly talk talking and there's a connection problem, there's all this interference and there's a thing where Elliot is saying, I'm on an island off island (laughs) so like a play on words and Helen just can't quite understand the full message so she's like I know you're I know you're in Ireland but where are you in Ireland so so that sort of stuff I really like and they end up getting cut off and and I mean that's mostly it for Elliot he does end up going to the distillery to like face up to this brother like the older one who also gets in trouble with like the head of the family like the one who's running the operation because it starts off with a funeral of like someone else who I think we're meant to assume has been killed by this family or at least they've been responsible maybe it's someone from the family who's who's in the organization who has ended up being killed but he then hears about what happened with Elliot's mother killing the other guy, the like the other like contact who she was trying to get information from, and that was just her way of saying sending a message. And this is set up off a turf war, so Elliot ends up back at the distillery, and we also follow Helen in this episode a little bit. You don't get that much with her, but by the end it all comes together and you do get quite a nice reveal because once we find out and Helen finds out about this whole gang warfare she finds out from the local cop and 
it seems as though he's really afraid to go after this family and to really pursue things. So when Helen says, we need to talk to Elliot's mother more, because she, she might have all the answers, the, the, the cop is like, no, no, you don't want to be doing that. And he keeps suggesting things which don't seem like they're really going to produce much result because like, he's like, I'm going to go back to the station and I'm going to examine all of the contents of Elliot's things. But you are slowly getting like quite nice reveals. Like at one point when they're looking through Elliot's stuff, she, they find like a, a wedding ring. I, I think it was meant to be a wedding ring. It didn't really focus on it, but it was in like a case like you tend to have them in. And I wasn't quite sure if it was meant to be that he was going to propose to Helen at some point, or if it was just suggesting then maybe he'd be married and this is part of his like former life or the life that he's forgotten. And it was hard to tell because Helen got upset over it in the moment. And I wasn't sure if she was upset because he was going to propose to her and and now he can't because they're, they're separated, or if it was more just realising this was a side of his old life. He was, like, married to someone, and she was getting upset because of that. But they definitely found, like, a, a wedding ring. But for a lot of the episode, Helen's, like, digging around, and she talks to Elliot's mother at some point, and... Once again, it's implied there's going to be more to Elliot's past life than just this stuff with his, like, crime family. Because the mother suggests that you have no idea who he is, really. And and she, she doesn't want to tell Helen even more. And she just threatens her a little bit, like, implied that you need to stay away from me and, and not keep poking around and... Once again, Danielle McDonald is doing some great acting in, in this episode, some great reactions. But as I said before, it, it looks as so though the, the guy, it, the local cop, is like covering things up, or at least he's too timid to like face up to this family because of the trouble. And you're sort of thinking it's going to turn out, then there's a reason why. And it's revealed at the end of the episode, I'm pretty sure. And this is a really clever detail because in the previous episode, we saw then he was talking to a mannequin. And that when, when the mannequin got knocked over, it, he got upset and he seemed to be treating this like it was a human and his wife. Now, earlier on in the episode, there's a scene with the well the other crime family the one who isn't Elliot's family and there's a scene with like the head of the family where he's like berating the older brother for like starting this all up again and just being really threatening but they're going around this location like I think it's the distillery and he's he's giving this speech about like history and things like that and there's all these mannequins around him and I thought at the time that's interesting like at the time I didn't think much about it but I did think is there some link to that and the other guy having like this mannequin in in his home and I think by the end it's confirmed and it's confirmed and the the cop is a part of this family and that's maybe why he doesn't want want to pursue the investigation too much because of what it all turn up because Helen goes round to see him and she has I think she's persuaded someone at the station to show her like the file based on this case and we it's not revealed what she turns up, but it's something that's quite suspicious and, and it leads her to go around his house. And so it's a really tense scene because slowly she's wandering through this house. And it's revealed that he's not only got this mannequin there, but the mannequin is of his wife. It's meant to represent his wife. But also that then he's killed his wife and 
it cuts back to Eddie at the distillery at the same time, and he's wandering through this room looking for, like, this head of the family or the brother. And it turns out then again, he's looking at all these mannequins. And there's a thing with him at the end as well, but this confirms to me then the cop is part of the family too, because I read it as they make mannequins of anyone they kill. It just seems and that's quite a logical thing and if they're making this connection because the camera definitely highlighted the mannequins earlier and, and it's a question of why do they have these mannequins and there was just something quite ominous about the way the head of the family was talking about history and, and certain things so it seems to confirm then yeah then the cop is part of the family but the other thing with Elliot at the very end is <laughs> he's looking across all these mannequins and he finds one with his name on and it's actually like a darkly funny moment at, at the end of the episode where he accidentally sets it well he doesn't accidentally he's curious because there's a button next to it it says his name Elliot Stanley and he presses the button out of curiosity and it says some funny message in like a funny voice and then some monologue is saying like I can't remember what it says now actually but it's just something a bit weird like, it's like I'm Elliot Stanley or something and something or other I can't can't someone will have to tell me in the comments because it's escaped my thing but it's a little curious and they've got one of him when he's not actually dead and if you remember in episode one, there's a scene at the end where someone goes to the bottom of the sea and, and comes back up and is like, OK, I've killed Elliot Stanley, like she calls someone. So it either implies that for the sake of the mission or something like that, someone's claiming from the past that they killed him but didn't really... Or it's possible that he's not really Elliot Stanley. He has, like, another identity. Like, maybe that's not really him. Something like that, because the mother definitely implied there was something a bit more. So it's another really good hook for the next episode. Another really good, like, cliffhanger. So I, I really enjoyed that. As the episode got on, I, I got more and more into what was going on. And there were a couple of nice reveals also. There's only a little bit with Ethan in this episode. Just a little bit more on, on the plane. And I forgot to mention in the first review, he, he's doing this whole blogging thing where he's like commenting on everything about his life he's comment so in this episode on the plane he's like commenting on like the crackers or the cheese or, or something like that some of the food on the plane and he's like speculating on why it feels so dry and cold and just things like that so that's a funny little side thing to to even it and then he's gotten into all this internet culture and doing daily blogs about his life and he just starts to get a little bit closer to this woman on the plane the one who we know has a link to what's going on in Ireland and he, once again he, he's getting more than he bargained for because he, he starts rambling on about his life and, and why he's going to Ireland and then he's asking her well why are you going you've heard all about me she's like is it business or pleasure and she's like well both and he's getting all curious and I think what's funny about the scene is that he's getting into it and then it's it's he gets more than he's bargained for because the way she puts it is then she's going to surprise a man in her life but then she, the way she puts it is then she's going to make him pay for everything that he's done to her, like every like sin or however she puts it. So without going so far to, to say exactly what it is, she puts it like that. So it's just a little bit of 
oh my god, why did I ask that moment for Ethan? Um, but it's just a little bit. Clearly, we're going to get more bits on the plane with them as we go on, and Ethan is slowly, I think, going to twig what exactly is going on. But yeah, good, good episode again, I think. It was a little slow at first, but as we went on and got more into it, and there were some nice reveals, I, I definitely got more into it, and and really enjoying this season so far. So that's episode two of the second season of Tourist. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe as always, and share me out on social media. Look out for more TV reviews coming up on the channel. I review newer shows. So plenty of those coming in the new year. Also look out for older reviews, more retro. For example, me and my regular co-host, Rachel, we review Buffy the Vampire Slayer in season long reviews. And we also review Gilmore Gals. So if, if you're into either of those shows, then check out our reviews on the channel. But I'll be back with more soon. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.